time to talk technology for the very final time of 2019. Matthew Dickinson, good morning. Look, I did contemplate being the final time, Nick, of doing a best of for the year. And I started doing that and I came up with about 40 stories. So I thought it's just going to be too long. We'll go with our normal process. It's been a really big year for that. It's been interesting and, and a variety of technology stories. I do want to kick off, though. Let's talk about this Amazon Ring camera, some security issues around that. Now, the Amazon Ring, not huge in Australia at the moment, but very yeah. popular in America. And, and ignore the brand for the moment. This really applies, this story really applies to any one of a number of cameras that you can get out there at the moment that are recording directly to the cloud. And the concept sounds brilliant. In mm. the old days, I'm talking about last year maybe, you had your CCTV camera and in-house you had some sort of video recording device, typically under hard drives. But if someone broke into your house or your business, they smashed the cameras and then they found the recording device and smashed that. So recording to the cloud makes a lot of sense. But for something to record to the cloud, it has to be connected to the internet, obviously. And that means that it's potentially something that can be hacked. And that's exactly what happened in this scenario. Uh, a woman had a camera in her daughter's bedroom. Now, I'm a little bit confused why you put it in the bedroom, but let's ignore that for the moment. We'll move past that. And she's sitting there in the bedroom, just playing in the bedroom, and suddenly her camera starts talking to her, which you can do with your app connected to your camera. Yep. But the person talking to her wasn't her mum or her dad or anyone else in the house. It was a stranger. And he said some strange things. He said, smash the TV. And then he started talking to her. And who knows where he might have gone next. Luckily, the daughter was smart enough to say, I'm a bit uncomfortable here. Something's wrong. He started screaming out to mum and dad. They came in and, of course, suddenly worked out there was someone who was looking at their daughter and communicating with their daughter who wasn't in the house, wasn't part of the family. It was someone who had actually gotten into their network. Now, we've heard similar stories. I remember baby monitors were a big one, ones mm. that were on the cloud, people uh, hearing strange voices coming over the baby monitor that was certainly not the child or the parent. Yeah. Where does this come from, though? It, it, this is a fault in the security on what end? Well, it's an interesting question because I, I don't know that I would call it a fault in the security. There is There are more secure settings that you can employ with this type of technology. So, for example, two-factor authentication, making sure you've got your Wi-Fi doesn't have your ID being transmitted, so your SSID, making sure you don't broadcast that, making sure you've got a strong password. And this particular family did admit afterwards where we were broadcasting our SSID and We've got a pretty weak password, didn't have two-factor on. So they actually suspect it was someone in their neighbourhood, someone close enough that could actually tap into their Wi-Fi rather than coming by the cloud. And I would, my guess, without knowing any details of this specifically, would say that would be more likely because to get in via the cloud and get to that camera, you're going past, in this case, Amazon security. Yes. Now, Amazon would have a team of security experts who would focus on that and nothing else. That would keep them awake at night making sure their network was secure. So it's less likely that's going to happen, but something where the user's responsible, i.e. the password they put in, you know, hi, uh, you know, put the password in, you know, Mary is, is here, it's something that's really simple to break, it uses words, doesn't use upper and lower case, doesn't use special characters, all those sorts of things makes it really easy prey for someone who wants to have a look at that sort of stuff. Yeah, but it's worth noting, I mean, you know, we're, we're days away from 2020 and people still often have the password under a magnet on the fridge for when they forget it. You know, yeah. home security matters these days and it matters more than ever as we get more and more devices connected to it. More and more devices and more and more parts of our life connected mm. to it. So I think you're spot on, but there are some simple things and then you probably should do a segment on that next year sometime <laughs> just to talk about some of the simple steps we should take because they're not that complicated, but people just ignore them completely. It, look, let's move on from this one and talk about what's happening in terms of regulating tech companies like Facebook and Google. People have been pushing at this for quite a while internationally. We're making some good movements locally. Yeah, and actually one of the really exciting parts here is probably not so much the social media giants. There's some work being done there, which is all part of this, but one of the things I'm excited about is the streaming services, mm. at the moment, they don't have to have any local content. Now, if you're a, a producer in Australia of TV, free-to-air TV content, you have to have 55% of your content local. Now, unfortunately, some of that's delivered in reality TV shows, <laughs> so maybe they should cut that back a bit. <laughs> but quiz shows and the like, and there used to be some great Australian dramas, not so much anymore. There's still some. ABC produces some great Australian dramas. Thank but, you very much. <laughs> but effectively, if you're a, a local producer here, you've got to have 55%. You come in from overseas as one of those many streaming services that we've got available here, the Australian content you have to have is zero. You don't have any whatsoever. So that's one of the things that are looking at. And, and again, maybe 55% is too high. Maybe all of them should have to have, say, 40% or 30%. There might be another number there, but at least look at that. And that would be a huge thing 
for some of these overseas companies to say, what, we've got to have Australian content? Oh, we don't want to be bothered doing that. It could be a massive shift with that. Now, I'm thinking of the, the most recent one that's come out, Disney+, Plus, because that would be a very unusual thing to try and push in Disney's face. It would be. Imagine saying that you've got all these beautiful old Disney classics, the nostalgia element is absolutely there, and then, oh, by the way, you've got to have X amount of content of Australian content. So it's a pretty big task the Australian government's taken on, and I think it's pretty fair to say there's some governments around the world who are looking at Australia to see whether or not they're going to be successful with some of this work and whether or not they're actually going to be able to enforce it. Now, they've, they've allocated $26.9 million, which sounds like a lot of money, but for a government department, it probably isn't that much money in the whole scheme of things. But that's the allocation of funds they've put towards it at this stage to say, let's create this department, let's go and have a look at what we can do. And again, in that, they're going to look at some of those social media giants as well and see what they can do in terms of what they're delivering here in our country. And that might come down to things like election advertising, we've seen some of that overseas where they might start to cut back on some of the things that maybe are untruthful or aren't giving the right message or are infringing on copyright, a whole range of issues there. Certainly going to be a big focus for 2020 by the sounds of it. I'm really curious to see where it goes. Yeah. A final one before we hit 10 o'clock and I laughed, I laughed when you sent this through to me, divorce lawyers using geo-tracking apps to find evidence of Spouses cheating. Well, what I laughed at is a stupidity. If you're going to be stupid enough to cheat on your spouse, at least be a bit smarter about how you do it. So the first guy had a Fitbit on, and the Fitbit data was shared with his wife. Oh. His wife noticed some physical activity at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning when he's away at seminars. Now, she kind of figured that he wasn't going to the gym at that particular time of the night, and a little bit of investigation didn't take much to work out that, yes, he was actually doing some physical activity, but not in the gym at not that time the of the Not in the gym morning. at all, no. <laughs> and the other one was an Uber account where the husband and wife had a shared Uber account. Again, she found it strange that he was away at a conference. These conferences sound like bad things, but <laughs> away at a conference, and the, the particular husband here was getting three or four Uber rides from remote locations to the motel that he's staying at. He must have been a very busy boy because those were three or four escorts he was getting to come and visit him each night and paying for the Uber ride with his Uber account. I mean, you just think, how stupid can you be? If you're going to do that, I mean, give them cash or you know, a whole range of things. But, but it used to be that someone who was suspicious looked at phone bills, looked at credit card statements. Now they just look at all the various tracking apps that are on your phone. And I suppose, look, we're being a bit frivolous about it in terms of divorce and cheating partners. But the real issue here is make sure you're aware of things that are being tracked on your phone, because in this case, it's probably the right thing happened. Someone doing the wrong thing was found out. But you might be doing the right thing and someone knows where you are and that might be a great thing. Yeah, you are giving away a lot of information at the moment. Matthew Dickinson, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you very much. We'll talk again in the New Year. Have a Merry great Christmas. Christmas to you and, and all your listeners. Thank you very much. We are coming up to 10 o'clock news. Morning show gets you through to 11. Come and join me tomorrow morning, 6.35am. Have a safe day, 10 o'clock.